Good morning. Does anybody thank God in the house this morning? Yeah. Good morning, man. We're so glad to have you with us. You can be seated if you'd like. We want to welcome our first-time guests here this morning. Thank you for making this your church today. We're praying that the Lord speaks to you and that you just find a place that is home and you find a place of comfort and that you get loved on today. If you are a first-time visitor, you have someone beside you, maybe they're a little shy, can you make sure to grab a guest card that's sitting in the seat in front of you? You'll see it in the back of the seat and that you'll go to each welcome centers in the corner and you can get a little token for uh, being here for the first time. Now I want to acknowledge our first, uh, I mean our uh, teens for winning on Teen Talent. They got superior. I want to give a little shout out to them. Coach Lakin did a great job. And honestly, I think that shows a lot of character. They're smiling faces. We were so proud of them. Uh, we were thankful that Brooke shout out, gave a shout out about, mm, or came to me probably last year, the end of last year, and she was talking about a drama team. And I just felt like the Lord was in behind it. And I said, let's get in behind this movement. And now look at them, that they've started something, and they do a wonderful job. And I'm just so proud of them as their team pastor. And Lakin does a wonderful job with them. They were meeting a couple times a week and really practicing and trying. Um, some of them feel like it's gifted. And then one of them has a statement, they don't even like to dance, but they'll do it for the Lord. So uh, we're so proud. I think that was one of them laughing upstairs. Um, if you're a graduate, Miss Kim, is this is your year you're graduating? Miss Kim needs some info on you. If you can get with Miss Kim, if you have a son or a daughter that's getting ready to graduate from any school or college, or they got even, I know the AEP, the Lyman School, if there's something going on, can you get in touch with Miss Kim? Uh, that is our secretary, and make sure that she gets her info so we can have a little token there. And then I'm going to, our last thing is our offering today. Um, I, I was thinking about this coming down the road. Lachlan had his hand out, and he kept saying, Dad, Dad. And then he would, I'd reach my arm back, and I would grab his hand, and then he would, he'd get done with that, shake his hand off, and then he would say, Mama. And then he would grab, Alexandra would grab his hand. And I was just thinking about in Scripture about when there's a covenant, it means there's a set standard of the thing we do, and if we meet that, then God blesses that and that you come in covenant with us, covenant with him. So when we give our tithes, know that as you stand on your feet, that as you, when you give your tithes, that you're actually coming in covenant with God, that you're locking arms with God or locking hands with God that allows him to open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing on your finances. Just like when my son reaches out to me and he needs my hand, then I know I'm going to make sure that he's fed. I'm going to make sure my son has clothes on his back. I'm going to make sure that I'm there for my son when he needs to listen, I needs to talk, or whatever need he has. I want to be there for my son. The same way, but greater sense that God meets that for his people, and that's you. So when you give your tithes and you actually uh, meet your side of the covenant, know that your Father God in Scripture is a rewarder of that and will come down and meet you right in your needs. So I don't know who needs that today. But I know that I need that every single week that I want to keep my hands locked with God. It's not that I want to disconnect from him. It's that I want to give my offering to him and my tithes every single week so I stay in covenant and blessing. So maybe that will push you forward today if you've never given and you get that revelation. And maybe you've give, been giving your tithes. Just know that you are still locked into the Father's hand. So as we pray and as your ushers come and we pray over the tithes in this service, may God's spirit just pour out. So God, we just thank you for all that you are. God, we thank you that, God, you're a rewarder of those who uh, digitally seek you. And God, you make ways through the wilderness and that, God, you're able to make straight paths. And God, that you're a rewarder of your word, God, so we just praise you. We praise you that, God, you're with us in the valleys and that, God, you're able to lift us up out of the merry clay. God, we praise you, God, that you're on the mountaintop. And God, that we can look into the hills and know where our help comes from. So today, God, as we just exalt you in our next song and as we listen to your word, God, may we be receptives of that word and may we use that to use a platform to go out into this week and God, to change our lives and begin to minister into our families and God, change some things about us individually, God, but we thank you for blessing and moving. God, we thank you for being the great minister that you are, but God, do it, do it, God. We just ask you to do it in Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Great to be in God's house. Amen. You can be seated if you'd like. And what a privilege that God allows us to come together, worship Him in spirit and in truth. And man, those songs just had me reeling today. I, I believe that there's probably not a person in here that has not had ups and downs, right? Everybody ups. Anybody up just all the time? Faking it? Okay. Can't even fake it up all the time, right? And I, I was thinking about that when we were singing that second song, and I said, I was thinking about the ups and the downs. You know, we, we love the mountaintops, but phew, hate the valley. But can I challenge you to believe there's life in the valley? Can, can I tell you he's still in the valley? When you, when, if you were hooked to a heart monitor, and some of you have been or some of you have seen someone it is, the biggest fear on a heart monitor, right, is the flat line. That's when we become complacent, let's say, in the spirit. That's when we stop going to church. That's when we stop fellowshipping with other believers. That's when we sort of move, move to, in the wrong direction. And it, sometimes it's so subtle, it don't even bother us, right? I only miss once, and then I, I I'm, you know, just once in a while. And then I'm, I'm tired, and I miss it once in a while. And so all the once in a while end up being quite a while, quite a lot. But I think about that heart monitor. That we love, the, we love the mountains in the natural and even in the spiritual. But at Heart Monitor, listen to me, we have to have both. If you're going to do life, you're going to have both. And if you're going to do life, you have to understand that on the mountain, God's still God. And in the valley, God is God. On the mountain, God is God. And in the valley, God's still God. And when you have an understanding of that, I am grateful that this ticker's still ticking. I am grateful that should they put me on a Heart Monitor today, it's going to be just like that. Or, or maybe like that. Right, but it's going to have both. We're going to walk through valleys and we're going to walk through uh, over mountains. And I just challenge you this morning, for whoever that's for, to have an understanding that God is still there in the valley. God is there in those moments. Miss Diane came up with a cane, and uh, I suggested that it possibly was not just to help her walk steady. I think she's fighting the men off. I'm just saying. I mean, call it what you want to. Your mountain may look different than somebody else's mountain. Right? Your, your valley is going to look different than somebody else's valley. Somebody else's valley, you may think, oh, man, I wish that's all I had going on right now. And somebody else look at your mountain and say, man, I sure wish I was up there right now. And so when I think about that, you know, we have one of the greatest examples in the Bible when the, when the storm, when the waves were tossed, the sea was tossed, and the storms were raging, and here comes Jesus walking on the water. You probably have all seen that drawing. Maybe you haven't. You've heard the story. And if you haven't, Jesus walked on water. Why did he walk on water? Just so that you could see that he's a water walker? Because of the miracle? Well, I heard an illustration recently, and I'm going to just give it to you today. Much as I'd like to lay claim to that. But here's, I think, what he, what he gave you that experience, what we saw that experience for, is so that you have an understanding that everything that's over your head is under his feet. You see, that, that sea was over their head. That storm was greater than anything they could deal with. The, the waters were raging and nothing that they could do about it. But when Jesus showed up, right? And so when, we have, when it's over our head, just go ahead and let him have it. Let him have it in the valley and let him have it in the, in, on the mountain. And can I challenge you with something? And, and, and maybe the ones that need challenging aren't even here today. They're flatlined, right? Yeah, you know, respectfully, you can call it what you want to, Okay. We're going to call it flatline. It's not to hurt anybody's feelings. You flatline. L-A-Z-Y. That's how you spell flatline. <laughs> you didn't know that. Some of you kids, there you go. Tell your teacher tomorrow. That's how you spell flatline. L-A-Z-Y. How do you get that, Pastor? Well, you got lazy in your fellowship. You got lazy in your prayer life. You got lazy in your Bible reading. You got lazy in your marriage. I don't want to whip anybody today. Let's move on. Y'all good with moving on? Let's be cautious. We want that. We need that. I need that. You hook me to a heart monitor, that's what I'm looking for. If it goes flatline and I can still see it, I'm praying the battery's dead. All right? But anyway, listen, thank you for being here today. If you'd take a moment, welcome our online family. We are so grateful for them and them being online with us today. If you would, my bride is traveling today, and so she's still in California. Uh, last I heard, she's still in California this morning. 
And uh, so she'll be, she'll be back dark and early in the morning, somewhere around 1 a.m. I gotta have to pick her up in Charlotte. So uh, I guess we could say she'll be home Sunday night, but I sort of, since I'm the one that's gonna have to be up driving, she'll be home Monday morning real early. And so just remember her, the Hope Center, and, uh, and some of their mentors are on vacation, and it has been a good time for them. Uh, I believe, I hope I'm not speaking wrong, but I believe, uh, best I can tell, they're going to have a baptizing in the ocean today before they head back home. And so, man, I'm so excited for the ladies that's getting to participate in that. That'll be something they'll never, never forget. And I promise it'll be warmer than it's going to be down on Reed Creek uh, here in a couple of weeks. But I'm just grateful. Would you just pray for them as well? And so, uh, again, welcome. We're going to be talking today, and I, I, I don't ever check what songs are being sung because uh, sometimes I want to, and other times I say, God, just put it together so that I don't gauge everything on that. And so the title of my message is, But Thanks Be to God. The but is there for a reason. Because I'm going through this and I'm going through that, but thanks be to God. I, I'm challenged with this or I'm dealing with that, but thanks be to God. I, I'm having trouble right now physically and financially and spiritually and emotionally, but thanks be to God, right? And so we, we challenge ourselves, even with the song, and I thank God, I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. And that song right there, I'm just going to, if, if somebody could get, uh, if we could get about 40 people in the same room and just get loose, I don't know what would happen right there. I really don't know what would happen. And, and maybe it's my fault that 40 of you hadn't got loose or 100 of you hadn't got loose because maybe I need to get loose first. I'm just waiting on one of y'all. I'm waiting on y'all to wind me up, and that's what it's going to take. Somebody take off, and then I'm, hey, we're going with you. But I just, uh, I give God glory, and I'm, I know that all of us have things to be thankful for. And maybe you're saying, well, you don't know what I'm dealing with. You've never been where I've been. You never, I haven't. I, I probably haven't. It's possible that I haven't. It's possible that I have. And I could challenge you with the same statement. The reason I'm this or the reason I'm that is because you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been dealing with. And so I believe even with all of that being said, we can be thankful to God for our family. We can be thankful for food on our table, a roof over our head. We can be thankful for the uh, church that we attend, the ministry we're a part of. We can be grateful for the job we have or the uh, fellow employees or coworkers that we have. We can be great. There's a time to be grateful. I've never found a moment that I couldn't be grateful for something. Never. Not one time. I I, I ate at Bojangles two two or three times this week. I ate at uh, Chick-fil-A twice in the last week. I ate at Ruby Tuesdays this week. And I'm just going to tell you something. I have been thankful. I have been thankful. Don't get me wrong. I've ate some cereal and I've ate some cheese sandwiches too. So I, I rolled my budget out, right? Ruby Tuesday day was cheese sandwich day as well. And, and so I'm grateful. There's never been a time that I can't find something to be grateful about. I am thankful and grateful that he woke me up this morning. I'm thankful and grateful that he's given me another day. I can, I can always find something to be grateful for. Uh, my car's broke down, but I, I still have a car, right? We may have issues in the house, but I still have a house. We may have some issues on the job, but I still have a job. And so 1 Corinthians 15 and 57 and I would challenge you to read this whole, this whole chapter. I mean, if you just run down through there, man, when he winds this up at verse number 57, he just gives it to us and he says, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through Christ Jesus, through, or our Lord Christ Jesus. And so I, I think about that. The only way we'll have true victory is through Jesus Christ. You won't have victory with the bonus you get at work. I promise the government's going to take about 32 to 28, 28 to 32 percent of it. You're going to be upset about that, right? You're going to be tore up about that. I just wish I hadn't gave it to me if they're going to take a third of it. Well, I'll take it. I'll take, I'll take your two-thirds. Give them a third. Guess what I have now more than I had yesterday? Two-thirds. My light bills this and my light bills that, but praise God, I have life, you know. We can find ourselves dealing with whatever we want to deal with, talking about however we want to talk. We can be finding ourselves that uh, if we're not in the Word of God, we don't know what that says. We don't know to be encouraged in our darkest moment. We don't know to encourage ourselves in the spirit of knowing that God gives us victory. Jesus Christ gives us victory. The, the cycle of the resurrection still holds power. The cycle of the, the cross still holds power. The cycle of the, of the whipping post still holds cycle. And so I challenge you today through Scripture that whether, it, whether you've been told you're a failure, you're not a failure. Whether you've been told you're a victor, the only way you're really a victor is to have Jesus Christ in your heart and depending on Him and being a devoted follower of Him. And so I, I'm going to just talk to you for a few minutes. The battles and the trials, we can hang up on that. You can get locked into that. You can have all those moments. You can have all those times. And you can whine and cry about that for 10 years from now. I talked to somebody the other day, probably Monday. I talked to somebody Monday, maybe to me on Tuesday. 
uh, I talked to them and they were talking about this happening and how rough it was and this happening and this and that and that and this. And I said, when did this happen? Oh, it was about 12 years ago. So nothing's bad happened in 12 years that you can't, that don't, that, that. And I said, listen, I love you, but let me share something with you respectfully. Let me share something with you real quick. I don't want to hear a 12-year-old story. It, it, if that's all, if that 12 years ago is the worst thing that's happened to you, my land, surely you can find something in the last 11, 11 years and 364 days to talk about, right? And so we, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves riding those things out. We'll find ourselves being defeated because we can't move forward. We'll find ourselves, listen, listen whoever hurt you and whatever hurt you, that, they gone. They done moved on. They done, they done pulled up the tent stakes. They done headed out and you have spent the last 12 years, specifically this person, and if they're watching today, they'll be glad I don't use names, right? We were somewhere recently, and they was telling us this stuff, and one of the people with them done like that, and looked at them and said, listen, they're both pastors, and they'll use that in a sermon. And we will, but <laughs> usually it's a good thing. And so throughout Scripture, we have moments of trials and tribulation, don't we? Throughout Scriptures, we watch the mountaintop experiences. We watch the valley low. We've seen that uh, God called one of, his, one of his servants to go up to a mountain and kill his own son. Did we, did we see that? Has he asked you to do that? He hasn't asked me to do that, nor will he ask me to do that. And it's amazing to me that we followed him up the mountain, and as they went, he told his servants, he said, uh, you wait here and we'll be back. But God had told him to kill his son, and he said, we'll be back. That's faith in God. That's faith in knowing that the sacrifice is going to be there when they get there. That's faith in knowing that though I just bound my son and laid him on an altar, I just bound my son, I've already raised a knife to him, and God showed up with a ram in the thicket. And you're thinking, man, I've never heard that story. Go, go dig it. Google it. Yeah, duck, duck, go it. You'll find it in there. And God is faithful, man. He will never, he will never let you down. I love that song, that second song we sung, that when we look over our shoulder, or I'll look back at this moment, and I'll see that you were there all the time. I will look back at this time in my life. I'll look back at this crisis in my life. I'll walk through Scripture, and I can look back over my shoulder, and you have been the God that you were to all people. You have been the Savior that you've been to all people or allowed to be, uh, allow them to be uh, all people. You've been the healer that you've been to all people. You've been the one that loved me when I felt unlovable. You were the one that when craziness was going on, you calmed my storm. And, and I think that if we don't remind ourselves of the great testimonies we have, we'll find ourselves flatlining. I need those mountains and I need those valleys. The greatest lessons will come out of what? The valley. Right? Rock bottom has, rock bottom has created more, created more uh, victors, right? Created more uh, champions. Rock bottom has created more champions than mountaintop has. We get up there and we get comfortable, don't we? Everything's going my way. It's smooth. It's good and all that. So all of a sudden, the rug pulls out. The dust flies and you're right down there. Mm -hmm. Don't flatline. And so we're going to talk just a little bit. I'm going to be as brief as the Lord allows. Can I just be real with you? People fail. People will fail you. <laughs> they don't just fail. They'll fail you. Uh, they don't just make mistakes. They'll make mistakes and fail you. And so when people fail, when people make mistakes, when people make errors in judgment, when people sin, when people uh, are going through valleys and going through trials, then we still find ourselves at 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have him, you don't have victory. I love you. It's great. Granny's got victory. Absolutely. That's awesome. Mom and daddy's got victory. Wow, that's great. Paul Paul's got victory. But here's the thing. They have Jesus. But you can't have true victory without acknowledging that you need a Savior and asking Him into your life. So none of us are exempt from failure. That's a fair assessment, isn't it? None of us are exempt from giving in to temptation. That's a fair assessment as well, I feel certain, in the house today. That there's been people here, and even myself, through the years, through the weeks, through the months, whatever that looks like, that we have given in to temptation or we have, or, or, or we have failed somewhere in our lives, and in turn we failed somebody. So God extends grace to us, and when he extends grace to us, it's to arm us with the knowledge that when somebody fails me, I fail God, he graced me. When somebody fails me, I grace them. And so we begin to learn how to operate in the word of God and in the things of God because the understanding and the fact is in Romans chapter 3 and 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all, all sinned. There's no perfect people, not one. There's no perfect pastors. There's no perfect 
uh, praise team members. There's no perfect executive council members. There's no perfect, but there is a perfect God who allowed his perfect son to give himself so that we could live in such a way to follow him and worship him and to let him lead us in righteousness and holiness. And we find ourselves uh, making up our minds daily. Am I going to give in to this or am I going to follow? Am I going to, am I going to, am I going to, or am I going to? And we, if we're not really careful, we'll find ourselves giving in to temptation. So with a challenge today, uh, I need to be mindful that all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. And that means me. That, that means caution. That means alert. That means be aware. If, if there was a sign on the side of the road that said sin ahead, you'd have an understanding, right? It never does tell you that, does it? You know, road work ahead, man flagman ahead, bridge washed out. Yeah, we see those if that be the case. Sometimes we need that in our spirit. And God's tried to give us that road sign and we've ignored it. God's tried to give us direction and we've ignored it. And so we keep, we're mindful and we need to be on guard and we need to guard our mind. We need to guard our heart. We need to guard, let me, let me give you this one real quick. We need to guard our circle. Who, who has influence on you? Who speaks influence? Who, who affects your life with influence? Right? Whoever that is. Are they an influencer for the good or for the bad? Uh, are we following them in the right direction or wrong direction? Are we just not wanting to hurt their feelings so we go along with everything? Listen to me. We have to have an understanding. Our, our mission this year is to preach holiness, and that really wasn't where I was going, but that's where we're at. Right? But thanks be to God. But thanks be to God that... Even though all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, thanks be to God that he gives, God gives us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so whatever that looks like, if you failed, if you made it messed up, then here we are. We're on this side of it. You're still alive, still able to do something about it. You didn't fall asleep last night and not wake up today. And so I'm grateful for that. And so let me, let me give you one more. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 33. It says, do not be deceived. That right there for me would have an exclamation mark. Do not be deceived. I might even put it in all caps. If I text you a message and it's all caps and exclamation marks, I'm excited, right, or I'm mad. Now, if it says I love you, all caps and exclamation, then that's different. I'm not mad. But I think that every now and then we look at that and we gauge everybody by what they say, gauge everybody by the text message. And listen, there's no personality in a text message. We have, we have uh, counseled people that broke fellowship with friends because the text message was whatever they read it to be. Weirdest thing. Society is, is what it is. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Huh. How's that happen? Well, my prayer time, and instead of going having my prayer time, my Bible time, having my God time, spending time with God on Sunday, spending time with God on Wednesday then I've followed somebody else to a habit or, or to an adventure or to a, um, I don't know, maybe to a sport. And eventually we'll find ourselves in a moment that evil company corrupts good habits. Mm -hmm. Just is what it is, right? Verse 34, awake to righteousness and do not sin. Wow. And if you do, thanks be to God. See, that's the one that needs to go in your refrigerator, dash of your car, maybe on the mirror in your bathroom. But thanks be to God. I had a rough day today, but thanks be to God who gives me victory through Jesus Christ my Lord. I, I've had a tough week, but thanks be to God. The kids have had a rough week. The neighbors have whatever, and, and my coworkers have whatever, and my finances are whatever, but thanks be to God. And when we can exercise that and walk in that, our life will never be the same. Your marriage will never be the same. Your family will never be the same. When we make up our mind that I'm going to walk and honor the word of God, I'm going to speak the word of God over my family. In verse number 4, 34, it says, Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. And here we go. Now you're a testimony. You're either going to lead them to God or you're going to push them further away from him. Because the only knowledge they have, I've had people say, Man, the reason I go there, I'm the only Jesus they see. Wow, I hate to hear that. Because I've seen you, and on some occasions, you didn't look nothing like Jesus. And if you're the only Jesus they see, what do, what do they think Jesus is? If we really feel that way, in this circle, I am the only Jesus they see. Whew, that's heavy. I'm not even, I'm not going to wear that. I'm not wearing that title, the only Jesus you see. <laughs> Wow, because today I may be right on it. Oh, man, we, we saw the love of Jesus. We saw the grace 
uh, of Calvary. We saw, we saw the empty tomb. Man, we just left. I mean, another day, I'm, it may not look too good. God may have cut me off at Walmart. Those double lanes at, at, at those uh, fast food places, they're of, they're of the devil. I'm just saying, see how you act next time. Tell me it's not. Yeah, grandma will just cut you off. Now my tea's going to be watered down and my burger's going to be cold. And how about grandma? Somebody just cut you off. Yeah, you're not exempt. You may have been in church 40 years, but these double lanes at the drive through that's new. You know, I believe everything, uh, uh, there's nothing new under heaven, Scripture says. Nothing new under heaven, right? Everything under heaven is of God. There's nothing new under heaven, so I'll just tell you this. If it's new, it ain't God. Just the way I feel about those drive throughs <laughs> Y'all do with it what you want. And so look, it's now at this point in Scripture, you've walked it out, you have a revelation. Anybody get a revelation today that, you know what, my life's really not that bad. I still have Jesus. I, my life's really not that bad. I still have a house. My life's really not that bad. I still have my kids. My life is really not that bad that if they were to hook me up to a heart machine, we'd just still see the mountains and the valleys. Wow, that is nothing to complain about. That is nothing to get upset about. That is nothing to get tore up about. Thank you, God, that I would still see some mountains and some valleys. Now teach me. And while you're teaching me, let me go out and teach others. I'm not going to get stuck here. Right? I, I'm not going to get stuck here in my mistakes and my failures. I'm not going to get stuck here in my judgment. I'm not going to get stuck here because I've had a bad day. I'm not going to get stuck here because something come against me. I'm not going to get stuck here because now I'm acting it out at the end of verse number 34. Now I'm acting it out. And what they see now is the only Jesus they may ever see, according to you. They, I'm the only Jesus they'll ever see. And so here's what we do. We awake to righteousness and do not sin because they don't know. They don't know. Why, why should we live it out there? Because it's possible they have no knowledge of God. And if I'm wearing my Christian shirt or my Christian cap, they're expecting something out of me. I used to tell people when we were running about 20 people, uh, we, we bought T-shirts. Man, we used to keep T-shirts rolling. You could afford 10 T-shirts, 30 T-shirts, 40 T-shirts. Yeah, 500 is a little different. We, we may get some, but it may cost you something. Okay? And so I tell them, I said, listen, don't worry, uh, thanks for the shirt, but listen, pastor, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't really live right. I'd hate to be wearing that shirt and get arrested. I said, no, wear it. Wear it. Listen, any publicity is better than no publicity. When they take your mug shot, make sure you pull it up that they can see life changers on it. In the recent years, I'll just be honest, I realized how foolish that was. Look back and say, dude, I've seen about six of that in Life Changer boys and girls down there on the, what was that booklet they used to put out? Crime Times. Yeah, y'all didn't know I saw you. But I saw you. Because Gert, she buys one of them every week. I saw you. I'm kidding. I don't know Gert, and I don't even know if they still have those. But I think about that. And I think, you know, I used to think any publicity was better than no publicity. But when I read this scripture right here, it tells me, look. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For what? Why? For some do not have the knowledge of God. So if you're planning on getting arrested, maybe you wear it wrong side out. If you're planning on living crazy, wear it wrong side out. Here's the thing. When you get back on track, you don't even have to wash it. Just flip it around. Some of y'all do that anyway, but I mean, this will work for a Christian shirt. And so when we look at this, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you're getting what I got out of this when God gave it to me. Thanks be to God who gives victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. At Calvary, he gave us victory, right? At the whipping post, he gave us victory. He gave us victory at the whipping post that we can be healed, right? Because he took stripes. He bore stripes for our healing. And so I think about that. And even when we're going through trials of sickness and trials of disease and trials of uh, whatever the sickness may be, broken heart, whatever that is. You see, I believe that's a, an, an illness as well. It's tough to get over a broken heart. The doctors can't mend a broken heart. The cardiologists don't know what to do with a broken heart, right? And so we bring our broken heart to the healer. We bring our broken heart to the master physician. 
And, and so when I'm armed with the knowledge that Jesus went to the whipping post so that I could have healing, then in my sickness, thanks be to God that gives me victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And when I'm going through trials and I've got that diagnosis that I prayed I would never have, thanks be to God who gives me victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. When my kids are dealing, y'all getting it? When my grandkids are dealing with sickness, when my family's dealing with sickness, you see that whipping post was, was not for naught. That whipping post was so that we have knowledge in the word of God that he went to that whipping post and he took 39 stripes, a stripe for everything that we'll ever have to deal with. If there's cancer, he took a stripe for it. If it's heart disease, he took a stripe for it. If it's asthma, he took a stripe for it. And so God is moving in that, in that moment, but the only way it affects us is if we believe. I can read you storybook after storybook. I could tell you about the jolly green giant and we could do all those things, or I could tell you about the great giant. I could tell you about Johnny Appleseed, right? And, and we'll get that, won't we? we? We'll get Johnny Appleseed, how he just planted the orchard, how he changed the whole landscape, how he done all this. We can grab that, but what about God's stuff? What about God's stuff? We're teaching our little kids about, I don't know if you still teach about Johnny Appleseed. I don't know nothing about it. We homeschooled our daughter. She homeschools her kids. So I don't even know what they do in public school except things I have heard. You don't hear any good stuff, right? Nobody's complaining about the good stuff. So I hear a little bit whatever that bad stuff is. But we'll push that idea on them. Let's use Johnny Appleseed. We'll push that idea on them. We can grab that, can't we? And if you can grab that, then grab this. Let's say I'm a product of Johnny Appleseed. I'm the apple. Well, in me are some seeds, right? And so in my life, just like Johnny Appleseed, in my life, I need to go plant some seeds. And in my life, if I plant seeds, then there'll be fruit. There'll be a harvest. But if I'm not doing any of that, there won't be. The seeds will just dry up and rot. The seeds will rot inside of me. The seeds, will, their power will flatline. Their authority or their, I guess, uh, the anticipation of them putting off any fruit or allowing any fruit will no longer exist. But when we're active in the things of God, and so let me tell you today, if you've been dealing with sickness, can I tell you something? He went to the whipping post. And time after time and time after time and time after time in Scripture, when someone would come to him broken, when someone would come to him sick, when someone would come to him diseased, he would say, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. He even went on to say that it's possible for your friend's faith to make you whole. He even went on, and, and we know what that was when the friends dropped the man down through the roof into the presence of Jesus, and Jesus made him whole. Your friend's faith made you whole. Jesus and uh, God in one portion of Scripture gave us opportunity to see that when Paul and Silas were locked up and chained, uh, wrongly accused and, and held in bondage, that, uh, that their prayer and their praise broke the chains of everybody. And so I don't just need to have faith. I need people around me to have faith. I don't just need to have faith for you. I need you to have faith for you. So when I have faith for you, we just come together. And so we move on forward real quick. And so he walked another 600, 600 yards to Calvary carrying my cross. And so when I fail and when I make an error in judgment, when I make a mistake, don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't quit. Listen to me. That's your moment to declare something. You can declare it when you're sick, that thanks be to God who gives me victory through Jesus Christ our Lord through the whipping post. And then we can thank God. You know what? I just failed and I just messed up. And man, I just made a boo-boo. Man, I didn't intend to do that. Man, I walked right into that. Eyes wide open, but here I am. Don't quit. Please don't quit. Please don't stop. We need you. They need you. Those people that don't know, have no knowledge of God, they need you. But here's what we need to do. We have to have it in our heart and in our spirit and graft it in our spirit, the word of God. I messed up, but thanks be to God who gives me victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so then we go on, roll on down to the empty tomb. Man, how awesome is that? That when he gave us the authority, gave you the authority that as, we're, as Christians, that the authority that he had, that he took the authority of death, hell, and the grave, guess what you have? The authority of death, hell, and the grave. If you're a Christian, death will not harm you. The grave will not hold you, right? Hell cannot have you when you're saved. And so when we have that, then we just say, thanks be to God who gives me victory over death, gives me victory over the grave, gives me victory over hell. You see, we, we, need, to, we need to own that a little more. Instead of walking around as Christians with our head down, with our, with our hat in our hand, and trying to share the gospel with our hat in our hand. I'm not, I'm not moved by someone sharing the gospel like that with me. Tell me what God's done. Show me what he's done. Give me a testimony. Tell me what he, what he done. Don't tell me how rough you had it 16, 12 years ago. 
Don't tell me how somebody hurts your feelings 12. Tell me what God did for you this week. He woke you up, right? He woke you up. He took you to work. He kept you healthy. He kept you doing it. And here's the thing. If you failed, we can go to 1 John 1 and 9, and I'm closing. We can go to 1 John 1 and 9, and it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's twice I've used this scripture in the last month. Why? Because it's still true. Why would, if it's still true and it still works, why would I change that script? Why would I not use it? Why would we not use that with our kids, with our family, with our coworkers? Instead of looking across our judgment nose and across our judgment finger, uh, then maybe we could just have the knowledge in our spirit that because of Christ, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And listen to me, if they confess their sins, then he is faithful and just to forgive them their sins and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Wow. So I just took myself out of the judgment seat, by the way. I took myself out of the judgment seat because it's not just me that could call on Christ and, he, and he'd give me a new life. It's not just me that I could confess and he'd forgive me all my sins. It's not just me that he would teach to walk in righteousness, but he will for them too, whether you like it or not. I made a statement one time and I said, you know, we talk about murderers and we talk about child molesters and we talk about rapists and we talk about, man, all the things, right? We can talk about all the sin, all the sinners, all the titles that we have. We don't, we don't have room in here to write it down. But if we're not saved today, the good old boy, the good old girl, we're going to go to the same hell they're going to if they haven't acknowledged Jesus Christ. So as much as you may despise them today and talk about them today and make gossip about them today, judge them today, if we don't get it right, we get to spend eternity with them. The very people that we pointed, the very people we talked about, the very people that we gave no hope. So armed with some words today, if it's all right, I'll just grab the first one and read to the last one. But thanks be to God who gives us victory. But thanks be to God who gives them victory. Listen to me, there's hope for your family. Thanks be to God who gives them victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Me too. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. My family too. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But do, do not be deceived. Listen to me. Don't just go bouncing around wherever you're bouncing around because you got saved. Be cautious. Guard yourself. Guard your circle. Evil, evil company corrupts bad, uh, good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. Why? It's great in here, isn't it? It's great in here. We have the knowledge of the Word of God. Out there, they need us more than they've ever needed us. Ever, ever, ever in history. They need the church outside these four walls more than they, the world has ever needed church. The church people, the Christians, the men and women of God, worse than ever. Why? Because some of them do not have the knowledge of God. And armed with the knowledge, right? Right? That if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And those people we're praying for begin to speak that. If they'll confess their sin, he is faithful and just to forgive them their sin and cleanse them of all unrighteousness. Stand on your feet. Let's pray this morning. You see, God is faithful. In our mountain, did, 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 did. I went to visit somebody in the hospital. It's probably been two months ago. And I'm sitting there, and that little thing's deep. You kind of get, you kind of get used to it. Boop, 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 boop. And it quit. I looked to see if it went flat. I'll be honest. I'm just sitting there, but I looked because. It, and here's what's amazing. They were like this, snoozing off and on, and as soon as that thing quit beeping, they looked like that. When it's quiet like this, there's still a chance for life. But if you hear that thing, flatline. We'll leave just like we left. I don't want you to leave any other way today, right? Except armed with the knowledge. As for me, as for our house, right? As for my friends, I'm going to extend grace. I'm going to teach them about Jesus through my living. Why? because they don't have the knowledge of God. And if I truly am, and listen, I would love for everybody to say that or believe that I'm the only Jesus they see, but if you're going to be the only Jesus they see, be the Jesus of the Word of God. Amen? We love you guys. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you today. Lord, we thank you for those that may have come in with 
hearts broken, Lord, for their family, hearts broken for friends, hearts broken for co-workers, Lord, that may be far from God. Could it be, could it be possible they just don't have the knowledge that we have? Could it be that they don't understand and they have no knowledge of God at all? Could it be that, Lord, if we would live it in front of them, Lord, if we would be what you've called us to be, Lord, if we would uh, uh, do what you've called us to do, God, then I believe, I believe, Lord, that this world could have a turnaround. You need us outside these four walls. God, you need us working and living the way you've called us to live and work outside these four walls, loving people, gracing people, uh, extending mercy to people. And God, I just pray right now over this congregation for those that came in heartbroken because of a loved one that don't know you, Lord. I just pray right now, Lord, that they'll get it engrafted in their spirit, that there is victory ahead. There is victory. God gives us victory. Thank you, God, for the victory you give us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you, God, that our families are going to be saved. Thank you, God, that you're going to use me as a testimony and as a witness of your greatness, of your healing power, Lord, of the victory that I have in you. God, may it be that whether I say anything or not, that they'll see that I once was lost, but now I'm found. God, may they see that I once was blind, but now I see. God, maybe they'll see that I once was headed to a devil's hell, but now I'm going to eternal heaven. And God, I just praise you today. God, for those that have confirmation, for those that have the knowledge, for those that have the faith in Jesus Christ that have called on your name and made you their Savior, God, I just praise you for them. I praise you for the ones that are in here today that haven't called on you. For those, Lord, that have walked away from you. For those that have flatlined in their spirit, that have walked away or they've just stayed away. God, I just pray for them right now. God, I pray right now that in this house, those watching online, if they're in that moment where they don't know if they, where they would spend eternity, where they don't, whether they don't know if they would go to heaven, and they don't know if they have a relationship with Christ, God, would you just love on them today? Love on them and assure them that, that you are waiting with open arms. Love on them and assure them that they have access with a repentant heart to the Holy of Holies. They have access to you to say, Father, forgive me. Come into my life and make me new. I receive this victory that you have offered. I receive this victory that you have declared over me through Jesus Christ my Lord. And so, Lord, just do a work in this house today. God, do a work with your scripture. My words don't mean a whole lot, but God, this scripture is power. My words don't mean a whole lot, but this scripture holds authority. My word don't mean a whole lot, God, but this this scripture holds salvation, redemption, and resurrection power. And so, God, I praise you for the word today. I ask you, God, to just love on this congregation this morning, that we'll just be honest before you today and say, God, I need you as my Savior. God, I need you as my Savior. God, I need to walk upright before those that may not know or have knowledge of you. Today, Lord, would you just love on us? If you'd be bold enough this morning with your eyes closed and heads bowed, maybe you'd be bold enough this morning to say, Pastor, I need to give my heart to the Lord. I need to be the witness for my family. I need a Savior. If that's you, just slip your hand up back down real quick, and I'm gonna, we're going to pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you're here today and you've been carrying it wrong, don't quit. Don't say the pastor called me out and said, I was carrying this thing wrong. Listen to me. Every time I come in this building, every time God prepares a message for me or allows me to prepare one, he checks me and checks off all the things that I need to straighten out before I stand behind this desk. So don't quit. Just say, God, sharpen me. God, use me. Let this word be engrafted in my spirit. The next, the next family reunion, I'm going to be different. The next co-worker, next time I'm with my co-workers, I'm going to live different. I don't have a whole lot to say, but I have a whole lot to live. Let's live it. God, we praise you today for this congregation. Lord, for those that raised their hand wanting salvation today, Lord, if they would just simply call on you and just say, Father, forgive me. Thank you for loving me. Come into my life. Make me new. Today and from this day forward, I choose you to be my risen Savior. God, give us strength and courage to exit this building in a fashion that represents you well. God, to exit this building with grace on our lips, with our conversation full of grace, full of love, and full of you. May we be the light in this dark world. May we be the difference makers and the life changers in this dark world. Lord, use this church collectively, individually, and collectively for your glory. We give you praise for this hour. We give you praise for this day. Use us. In Jesus' name. Can somebody give God a hand clap of praise this morning? He's worthy. He is worthy today. Man, how awesome is it? I have a couple things to remind us of. You know, uh, always know that you have open access to the throne of grace. Your week don't have to fall apart and stay falling apart till you get back on Wednesday or Sunday. 
Okay? I had someone call me recently. The only reason I'm really saying that, they said, Pastor, I can't wait till Wednesday. i got to get some things taken care of Wednesday. I said, do it right now. Right? Do it right now. And so we have full access. Tuesday night, we have a leadership meeting. Uh, it'll be our leadership, staff, and volunteers. Uh, we don't have a, your volunteers, but I'm trying to volunteer you to be here on Tuesday. But at Tuesday at, at 6.30, it'll be our meeting. If you want to be here by 6, we'll have pizza and snacks and things like that. We would love to have you come if you're a part of any team, whether it's Shepherd's Watch, prayer team, uh, you work with the kids, you work in the parking lot, you work at the doors, whatever your role is here and you're, you volunteer in this ministry, we would love to have you here. If you're coming, though, be sure to let your team leader know so that Miss Kim orders enough stuff or we'll be running, we'll be cutting those eight pieces into, if you come in, there's 16 pieces in the box. Somebody didn't tell us it's coming, which means you're getting a skinny piece. And so uh, be sure to let your leader know so that, that we prepare well. Wednesday night, of course, 7 o'clock. We know you're going to be here on Wednesday night at 7. Thursday is the National Day of Prayer. You probably won't have time to run to a, pole, to a flagpole somewhere. You probably won't have time to meet in a, in a courthouse somewhere necessarily or in a church if you're working. But let's be mindful Thursday. Let's pray for our nation. Let's pray for our community. Let's pray for our spiritual leaders as well as our national leaders. Amen. Uh, pray for our government. You know what we need to be praying for. But uh, let's just be mindful. I know you probably do it every day, but a Thursday is just a, a day where we're all, the whole nation will be mindful. And so I just, I just encourage you to do that, I actually invite you to do that, and we'll just all pray together. Listen, we love you guys. I pray you have a great rest of your day, and we look forward to seeing you Tuesday or Wednesday and praying with you on Thursday. God bless you guys.